Right now on Denver 7 News at 6 a.m., it's the unofficial start to summer and travel is taking off this holiday weekend. I'm Denver 7's Club Bordelon. on Wear Out Live at DIA this morning, where the number of travelers are expected to hit pre-pandemic levels. We're keeping a close eye on these security lines for you. Traffic isn't expected to pick up until later on today, but I'll be watching the roadways and the great escape out of the state, as well as all the travel trouble spots you can see here today. Plus, Colorado officials track what could be our state's first monkeypox case. What you need to know about this virus getting worldwide attention. And get those running shoes ready. We're just days away from the Boulder Boulder. I spoke with a longtime participant who's not letting age stop him from crossing that finish line. If I fall down, some of them can pick me up. We're all gonna we're all gonna help each other across that finish line on Monday. Uh, we'll be out there yeah. on Monday as sponsors. Uh, can't wait! Thanks for joining us this Friday. I'm Nicole Brady and I'm Brian Sanders. Happy Friday morning to you as we take a live look from our Mile High camera and a beautiful start to our holiday weekend with the sun just starting to rise over downtown. It will be a busy travel day if you're trying mm. to uh, hit the road or head to the airport this morning. We have team coverage. Uh, we'll start with Katie LaSalle monitoring how the weather will be looking for any of your trips. Uh, travel today, you won't encounter many weather worries. We're going to stay mostly dry statewide and it is a really beautiful start to this Friday morning. Crystal clear skies over Long's Peak from Rocky Mountain National Park. A beautiful sunrise this morning as you take a time Time lapse there over City Park will stay under a partly cloudy sky for the rest of the day. A little more cloud coverage in the late afternoon with just a 10% chance of a few isolated gusty thunderstorms. Temperatures this morning very mild. We're at 60 degrees right now. Wind sustained from the southwest around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Temperatures later on will climb to the mid to upper 80s. The record is 93. Doesn't look like we'll get there, but pretty close. And we'll stay dry for today, tomorrow here for the Denver area. A better chance for more widespread storm and shower activity will arrive for the second half of the weekend. Outside right now we're in the high 50s over Centennial Aurora down through Highlands Ranch Boulder currently at 55. If you're walking the dogs out and about this morning by 8 o'clock we'll be at 64 degrees and temperatures soaring to the mid and upper 80s. Here's future cast you can see after 2 o'clock still staying dry but there's that chance near Evergreen over the far eastern plains of seeing an isolated storm. Jason a little better chance for more moisture by the end of the weekend though. Uh, yeah and right now the great escape out of the state is happening and it will happen in earnest later on this morning whether it's up into Wyoming whether it's out to Kansas Kansas over here over to Utah or heading south into New Mexico. We have a good drive around the state on any of the state highways and byways and it look, really looks nice anywhere you want to go and you can see on the overall map a lot of green out there anywhere you want to go so it should be a little bit lighter than normal seeing a little bit of traffic on 270 and I-76 but again it looks better than average for us here this morning. It will be a busy day not necessarily driving to and from the airport where the security where the uh, speeds right now are on the high side E-470 also looking pretty good. Now right Right now the security wait time this is reported by the airport it is getting a lot better than it was earlier this morning and to confirm all of that is to Colette Bordel on taking a look at the security wait lines there uh, Colette and it looks a lot better than it was even just what an hour ago yeah, Jason, you know at a restaurant when a hostess tells you it's going to be like a 45 minute wait when it's going to be 30 minutes just to make sure that you don't leave that line. Well, out here right now, the website's saying a little bit more than this, but I just asked an employee. They are guessing this line here at the South Security Gate is around five minutes for people to get through this security checkpoint out here. Now, this is the checkpoint you are likely going to be using if you are coming to the airport today, which there's a lot of you coming out today. Now, there's more than a million million people expected to be traveling through DIA this holiday weekend. That's from Thursday to Tuesday, and that number tops the number of people passing through here during the same time period in 2019 pre pandemic. AAA says nationwide the number of people traveling this weekend hits 2017 levels and AAA Colorado has new data saying the majority of Coloradans feel comfortable traveling again. So this South Security checkpoint, this is where the majority of many of these passengers will be getting through to get to their gate. Now the North Security checkpoint, that's where you go if you're TSA pre-check. The bridge security is also open, but I haven't been up there this morning. I can't attest to what that line is looking like. At DIA, Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. Well, it is nice to see that one moving along right now. Thank you, Colette. Uh, with the big crowds out at the airport, DIA is asking that you arrive extra early. There are at least two new options to make your time there. A little more enjoyable, though. The Plaza on the Park opens today, which is the area between the terminal and the hotel. 
Uh, so maybe you need some time after you get parked and get your luggage checked in to just get a breath of fresh air. I was there as they were setting up Wednesday. It's really exciting and people can step outside the airport and experience a park like when does that happen? It's grass like turf. There's lounge seating. There's cornhole and on certain Fridays there's going to be jazz performances and then this summer there's going to be free mini golf. Yeah, you can just hang out there for a little while. If you have some extra time after going through security, maybe consider a visit to the new gates on the B concourse. There's outdoor seating, a fire pit and new concessions. If you are going somewhere this weekend, the CDC has issued a travel warning for monkeypox. Cases have been confirmed in at least seven states, and now health officials here in Colorado are looking into our first possible case. Denver 7's Jessica Crawford joins us. And Jessica, health officials really want to stress the risk to the public they believe is low. Yeah, not just health officials stressing that, the governor stressing that as well, saying that most people are going to be at low risk for monkeypox. He does call the disease serious, though, but saying that generally not fatal for people who have healthy immune systems. With that being said, the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment has announced that our state does have its first presumptive case of monkeypox, and here's how it's spread. In parts of the world where human cases of monkeypox usually happen, people are generally exposed through bites or scratches from infected rodents and small animals. It can also spread when a person is preparing wild game or having contact with an infected animal or possibly animal products. High risk exposure is when there's unprotected contact between one person's skin or mucous membranes and the skin lesions or bodily fluids from a person known to have active monkeypox virus in their bodies. There are two vaccines that are available to prevent monkeypox and Colorado is requesting vaccines from the federal government for those who are at high risk. Monkeypox expert Dr. Reginald Washington says risk will be low for most people. I think there will be more cases as it spreads from person to person, but I think because we know how it's spread and we know who's at risk for this, meaning someone who already has the, the monkeypox, I think it will be self-contained within certain populations and there will be no reason to have widespread vaccinations to the general population. There currently are some monkeypox outbreaks in Canada and in some European countries, but it generally is rare here in the United States. If it is seen here in the United States, and it's usually contracted from a person who has traveled internationally. Live from Denver, I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. We do have an in-depth write-up on monkeypox right now on the DenverChannel.com, including information on how it spreads, what symptoms you should watch out for, and the treatments available. Well, as our school year winds down and already with a heightened awareness about school security, law enforcement had to respond to several metro area schools over reports of guns and threats. Northfield High School in Denver was put on lockdown yesterday over reports a student brought a gun to school which turned out to be a paintball gun. Two boys were detained and then released to their parents. Cherry Creek High School also went into lockdown. Police received a tip someone wanted to, quote, shoot up the school. Police were able to secure the campus and the students returned to class. Meanwhile, in Boulder, a student is facing discipline for bringing an airsoft gun to Casey Middle School, which is the same school where another student was arrested for a threat earlier in the week. This morning, as we take a live look at Uvalde, Texas, you can see the memorial there has grown. Flowers and signs cover those 21 white crosses, each with the names of the victims etched into them. Police, meanwhile, are now facing criticism for how they responded during the shooting and how their story keeps changing. Officials now say a school resource officer did not confront the gunman outside the building. They say the shooter got through an unlocked door. Other officers arrived on scene but were driven back by gunfire and called for backup. Nearly an hour later, a Border Patrol SWAT team went in and killed the gunman. Some of them just stood there and uh, said, to myself, well, why aren't they going in? They rushed in and, like, and all that. Like, I, I, we didn't see that. And the Texas Department of Public Safety is investigating the response. Uh, it could take weeks to hear the results of that. President Biden and the First Lady will visit Uvalde on Sunday and will meet with families who lost their loved ones. We know many of us will spend some time this weekend reflecting on the meaning of M Memorial Day and remembering those who died serving our country. Yeah, tomorrow there's a ceremony at the Colorado Freedom Memorial in Aurora. 
The glass panels <clears throat> have the names of more than 6,200 Coloradans who gave their lives, starting with the Spanish-American War. It would be really easy just to forget that so many had left these beautiful mountains of Colorado and, and gone to defend freedom around the world, giving their lives so that we might enjoy these very freedoms. It, it, you know how busy every day of your life is, and it's easy to forget. So the memorial's there, so, so when you want to remember, when you want to reflect, there's a place to do that. And a whole day of events are planned. There's a pancake breakfast tomorrow at 8. There will be music and military vehicles out there as well. And then the memorial ceremony starts at 10. Katie. 610 and it's a really pretty morning here across the state. Mostly clear skies in Denver. Increasing cloud coverage this afternoon. If you're out and about hanging out in the backyard by noon, we'll be at 85 degrees, low 80s with a couple of storms around. We'll take you through the full forecast when we come back. And I have seen a whole bunch of buses that are not operating today because no operators available to drive the bus. And so check your RTD schedule on your bus or even on the train here today because your bus might be delayed, especially here in the early morning hours. The rest of the drive looks just fine. We'll take a look at it for you coming up. When are you most productive? The pandemic has shifted our work time and may shake up the hmm. traditional nine to five. And the Boulder Boulder is back. The race returns Monday for the first time since 2019. We'll have an easier way to find parking as tens of thousands of runners and fans descend on Boulder.